this is Detective Salisbury, Lynn County Sheriff's Office. Today's date is March 11, 1992, the place of Lynn County Sheriff's Office. Uh, this will be a taped interview with John A. Ackroyd, A-C-K-R-O-Y-D. Also present is Lieutenant Dar Holm, Lynn County Sheriff's Office, and Deputy Mark Foster from Jefferson County. Okay, John, first of all, I, just want, I want you to identify yourself for me. Uh, John Ackroyd. And your current address? Uh, oh. In where? Sweet on. Okay. And we talked about recording you and you're aware that we're recording a conversation. Right. You have no objection to that. Okay. Because you're in a confined situation in a police station here, we have to go through the thing saying that we did numerous times before. Right. We have to advise of your rights. Okay. Right. You have the right to remain silent. You understand that? Yes. Okay. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand that? Yes. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present while you're being questioned. Do you understand that? Yes. If you can't afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before being questioned, if you wish. Do you understand that? Yes. And if you do give a statement, you can stop talking at any time you, you wish. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Having these rights in mind, uh, will you talk to Mark Foster and Lieutenant Holm and I? Yes. Okay. Okay, John, we've introduced you to Mark. Right. And I told you he's from Jefferson County. You yes. know him? Uh, yes, I know him. You've already met him. Well. <laughs> and the reason he's here, remember last time... We talked about your statements about finding the jogger right. in February. And, of course, we don't know the area over there like you and Mark probably do. And that's why Mark's here, is to help us out and brought some maps to help you out. And maybe we can right. sort these things out better. Let me interject one thing. This is Detective Salisbury. And the time, I didn't state the time. It was 4.55 p.m. Okay, go ahead, John. Did you think about what we had talked about? Uh, tried to, and oh, I was also studying for a CDL test. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I really can't remember much back then. Okay, I know when we left, uh, we had had you read the statement. Yeah. You made the state police back in. Yeah, one, one 79, back, I believe. Way back there. Yeah, you did find the joggers. Do you know her name? Uh, Kate something other. Okay, but she was the lady that you had seen jogging probably Christmas Eve. As far as we know, she disappeared. I think about that, yeah. Okay, Christmas Eve of 78, 77, 78, 78. And then in August, you found some remains. Well, why don't we talk about that first? And give us a rundown on how you happened to be there uh, in August. Well, like I, you know, my statement says it's out hunting, and uh, my dog was running around and started barking. I went over there. Okay. And what did you? And have? well, there's some bones. And I went down immediately to the camp sheriff's sure store. And then uh, I had the woman there call the police, and I took them back out there. Yeah, I think we covered that. Then, did you take something with you? No. You don't remember taking? Not that I know of at all. Okay. Just went down to the store and right. told the people you had found something. Right. What did you tell them? Do you remember? Uh, probably something like found uh, some bones out there. You know, probably probably human. Pretty sure it's human. Identify who they might be at all? Uh, no. Uh, I'm not positive, but I think the police officer asked me. Who it could have been, and I should have thought, you know, might be that missing girl. Referring to the, the uh, Kate Turner, I think. Okay. And she is the person that was jogging. There's been a lot yeah. of publicity about yeah. that in the area, hasn't there? Uh, quite a bit. There's a lot of different rumors going around. Okay. Um, and you worked in the area at the time? Up at San Am Junction. And you lived there? Then? Right. Okay. So you're kind of from that area. Yeah. You know the area pretty well. Right. You spend a lot of time out uh, hunting and generally driving around. And yeah, I was starting to do a lot of hunting over there. Over there, you mean Camp Sherman area? Yeah, but, uh, not exactly the Camp Sherman area, but farther on over behind Sisters on the same side. Okay. 
uh, I always thought it was Green Ridge, but it's something other ridge. You can drop right down back to Sister School. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Christmas Eve. You were in that area that morning. Right, I guess. Can you tell us about that, why you, how you happened to be there and where you had been earlier? Well, like I told you, it's, uh, this one friend of mine would uh, be wanting to go out and get some medicine. And he didn't have a gun. I had a 22. So when we got off work, I went down to his place. I went down to see if there was any right in that area. I was just going to cut up and go across the hill. And uh, I turned down. I seen her when I went in. I went down a little bit farther. I started going forward to the thing. I noticed I was almost empty. And I switched my tanks. And seen that was empty. So I turned around and went back out. Almost ran over a dog. Okay, you're talking about your pickup. Was right. Pretty near out of gas. Right. Do you know where you were at then when you noticed that? Uh, just turning off the pavement onto the, the dirt road that goes up over the ridge into uh okay we have a map here and maybe with mark's help you can point out the map for you okay. just mark on it mark here. And this here is the road that goes over yeah this is a dirt road this is a paved road and this is a dirt road that goes up over the right okay i turned around right what right there somewhere. right at the beginning of the road right beginning we kind of got the highway, yeah. and it starts to dip down. Yeah. And then it goes up and climbs all the way up. Yeah. Hey, John, there's plastic covering that map, so why don't you ride on there, to make a big X, and then ride on there, and turn around. I turned around here, someplace will something pretty big so we can understand what you're talking about. Yeah. What were you driving then on that day, John? My pickup. Okay, what was it, remember? Seventy uh, eight? Uh three quarters on four. Pickup. Pickup. So what color was it? Uh it was a little white. Okay. Uh did, and you said you you switched the tanks, and when you got there, you just had gas. Yeah. How much gas does the thing hold? Uh, I think I think it's like you know, it's like about 19 gallons in each tank. Okay, so it holds a total of uh, almost 40 gallons. Yeah. Okay. And when you said you were out of gas, what? How much do you think you had left? Um. Just barely enough to get the sisters if I stayed on the flat. Okay, you remember what kind of mileage that thing got about? Mm, about 10. Okay, then why do you need to go to sisters? Well, half the time there's a gas station at the, the thing, but half the time it's not open. Was it open in this particular time? Did you pull in there? I didn't even pull in there because uh, usually it's, it's not open. Unless the store is open, then it, it's not open. You didn't think it would be this thing? I didn't think so. So you didn't do And also, I didn't have no money, and all I had was credit card. What time, what type of the day are we talking about on this, that time? Somewhere early in the morning. Okay. Do you remember what shift you was working at that particular time? Night. Night shift. Do you remember the hours? Uh, not positive, no. What time do you think you got up? Well, regular, I think regular is, uh, Time to get off at somewhere around five thirty, five five thirty. Okay. And how far, how far is the Sandy Am Junction for you? Is working to down to Camp Sherman? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's. Uh, well, I think it's thirty-eight miles from the junction to Sisters. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that'd be pretty close. 
and then but yeah, this would be the shortest way back two sisters well if you get on a low tank and you go on uphill you get away from your pickup too and then I, I figured I'd run out of gas going up the hill to get over because it's a from there, it's pretty long hill yeah. okay so you turned around and came back on, on back on the highway do you know that what they call that road or anything is that the road that goes right into Camp Sherman uh, you can get to Camp Sherman there Okay, then after you turn, she ran into the jogger. Right, she was. Uh, can you show us where that is on this map? Not exactly. Maybe there's some. Okay, well, remember where you turn around and where the headwater is. Maybe you can. Now you said you drove by her, and then you turned around, and then you drove back, and the dog ran out, or yeah. you almost ran over it, or something. Did you see her the first where, time? Where is Pardon? You've seen her the first time. She was, right. yeah, she, was, she was on the other side of the road when I seen her the first time. Okay, why don't you mark where you think I, it's close where you would turn to the store, you know. See, this, this one turns to the store. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of halfway between the headwaters and the turn there to give you a reference point. It was past the turn of the store? I can't say. You don't remember? Okay. Okay, what about when you're coming back now after you think you're out of gas? Where do you think she was? You know she's on the opposite side of the road, you said? Yeah. That's the store. I think it's just right in here somewhere. Okay. If that's stored, this is game records. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 So on the way up, you've seen her? On the way up and on the way back, it was just in that same. somewhere in that area. She hadn't gotten very far then? No. Okay. She had a dog with her? Yeah, it was a little dog. Okay. And I know when, see, so she was on this side of the road. And then when I come back out, she was on this side. And the dog wants to run across the road. Okay. All right. When you're talking about, you know, uh, north is up on that, isn't it, Mark? Yes. Okay. If you're talking, when you're on, you're seen her on this side of the road and that side of the road, why don't you indicate so we'll understand if she's on the west side okay. or she's on the east side? So, well, I first seen her, I think she was on the west. Okay. And then she was on the east on this side. Okay. Right. Going in the same direction? Both times? Which direction was she running? I think she was running this way when I went in. Okay, so she was running, when you went in, she was running south? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And when you came, and when you seen her the second time, she's running the same direction? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. And you can grab a seat. <laughs> what, and then the dog ran out, and you had to stop? Yeah. Hey, and, yeah. yeah. And you talked to her? Well, she picked up her dog. I asked her if I'd heard it. I didn't feel the bump or anything, and she just grabbed her dog. She said, no, he, he kind of runs all over the place, but he missed him. I said, and I told her, I said, well, Merry Christmas. And she said, Merry Christmas to me, and I drove off. You seen Hannah? Remember him? He worked with you, but uh, yeah. Did you see him before you saw her? After. And he was going. He was northbound. Well, when I seen the car, the there was the, the black pickup. He had the black pickup. I think. Not for sure. And then there was a Volks, Volkswagen and a Beetle. And maybe two of them. And another car. You see, that was way. There's five feet. There's a camp trailer out here somewhere right here. Okay. Now, see, I was way out here. And you saw who when I seen all the other vehicles coming in. I, in fact, 
including him. Yeah. See, he, he was about here. Oh, and then, somewhere in here. And when I, when I got down here, there's some curves just before the yeah. thing. That's when the other, other vehicles were coming in. And then I got in and I just on in the sisters. Could you just write saw him on there? So. Oh, shit. Yes. Is he doing it? Yeah. In Two A's. Yeah. And then eight. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Great. Best, best of your knowledge. You remember what? I mean, I know it's been a long time. Best of your knowledge. Can you remember anything? Can you give me a description of the gal that you did see anyway? What she was wearing. The best of your knowledge. No, not at all. I mean, what? Your positive was a female. Well, yeah. Okay. But the dog. I don't know what type. Of, but uh, just one of the little ones. Right. I said you said. But, uh, like I said, she picked the dog up. Whatever color it is. I think. I know it has some black on it. Probably, like, black and white and, and another color or something. What the lady, is she blonde, brunette? Do you remember? No. Not at all. Did she have long hair, short hair? I don't know. Old, young. She was somewhere probably about as old as I was then. Okay, how old were you then? Oh, God. Uh, right around 30. Okay, so you think it's a, and she was white female, not black. Yeah. Not Indian or Hispanic or any of those nationalities, but definitely a white female. For sure. Okay. You think, well. Is she a pleasant girl? Or? Well, she seemed to be, I went. I asked her in the covers the dog. No, you know, he just runs all over the place. Good looks. Good looking? Well, how can you tell if a woman's good looking when she's talking? Was she winded yeah. pretty bad? In pretty good uh, shape? Or? I really can't say. Did she say anything how far she'd been or anything like that? Uh, Did you ask her where she came from? No. Did she been going? The conversation was just about just, the dog. Just about the dog, and I wished her Merry Christmas, and she wished me a Merry Christmas. Was she upset at you because you almost hit the dog? No. Okay. So there wasn't there wasn't nothing bad about that contact with her at all. No. Okay. How long do you think it last? Just about maybe a minute, minute and a half. Hour. Okay. Okay. Then where'd you go? You were hit Into the, the Exxon station, the sisters. Okay. And uh, used my credit card, and I remember it was there for a little bit. Just, in fact, uh, one of the deputies actually got my slip to show how much gas I put in there, and it was quite a bit. How much was it? You remember? Probably somewhere right close to forty. Forty gallons. Yeah. yeah. All right. And uh, it's the same, like uh, 36, 38, something else. He said it was a complete fill up. Okay. And you had you had one gun with you? 22. A 22? Yeah. What was uh, it? Just 22 bolt action. Rifle or pistol? Rifle. Any other any other weapons? No. How about a knife? Mm, pocket knife. What kind of pocket knife? I got her at home. It's just uh, like a sort of like an old timer. Well, remember, was you were gonna go poaching, right? Yeah. So, uh, would you take a hunting knife with you? I don't even really have a hunting knife. I use pocket knives. Okay. All right. So you were going 
Uh, where did you go after you gassed up then? Out to, uh, I guess it's Roger Beck's and uh, Cynthia, that was Pam's mother. She lives right next door to him. And she told, as I pulled up in the driveway, she hollered, she was on the porch. And I remember her hollering, wake them up and get them over here for breakfast if they're going to eat. And you come too. What time is it now? I don't know. Is any idea? It, was, you know, it could be anywhere from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. I don't know. You know. I got off, went down, didn't fill up gas, went out to there. Then we ate. Then me and Roger went out. Okay, where did you live in, sisters? Oh. Uh, just on the back road going up over uh, uh, McKenzie, McKenzie Pass, there's this big uh, trailer park that was starting out. Uh, Crossroads. I don't know, this one on the, you go on the, uh, the, the McKenzie Highway, it's on the left. Yeah. You go underneath a, a bridge. All right, that's Crossroads. Yeah, okay. Back in there. And they live there as well as their mother. Right. Okay. And different traders. They are Roger Beck, his wife Pam, yeah. and some kids. Yeah. Okay. And that's who you went to get, Roger. Right. And you were going to go get a deer. Because they, they needed the meat and didn't have no money. And he was hungry and the kids were hungry. Okay. And you'd arrange this the night before or sometime before? Or? Uh, it was a couple days before, I guess. Okay. And he didn't have a gun. No, not that I know. So you had breakfast. You, were they asleep when you got there? No, they were just getting up. Roger and Pam? Yeah. Roger was dressed, but you know, Pam was, as women are, was swollen. <laughs> what did she have on? No, uh, she was almost dressed. I don't know if she had a house room on or what, but she was halfway dressed. So you went to breakfast to Cynthia's? Yes. You know Cynthia's last name? Harris. Remember what you had for breakfast that morning? No. But you were there for how long did you suppose? Forty minutes an hour. And then you and Roger left? Right. And where did you go then? Uh, we went out back out. This is Highway 20, and this is Highway 24, this is close up Green Ridge. Okay, it's close up Green Ridge. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going up. Now here's the old farmhouse. Well, no, it's a little further. Did you, did you, once you got to the top of the hill, did you go right? right. Okay, yeah, that would be the road again. Oh, wait a minute. No, we came out that way. We went back up in okay. by Fox Creek Springs. Okay. Before you get to Fox Creek Springs, the uh, road that you just travel back around. Yeah. Well, that's this loop here. Yeah, okay. So you're going out there. It says loop the area that you... Okay. You're going right on the road. That's the road there. Did you see, shoot something? Yeah. That was, uh... What an X were you? I think you shot it. Where's the ball? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. It's in mm here. -hmm. Oh, there's another one over here. Oh. Uh, we've got a big curve out. Uh, still moving. Oh, yeah, it's got the curve out. Okay, okay, that's right. That's right. Uh, Okay, so we probably be right in here. Just up here. Or if you don't, we can connect this part. And then we come around. Okay. 
Well, we got those two X's right out there. Just put, we don't, we don't, we don't mind even know what they were. Just put deer, animal, or deer be all right. We don't really know what it was. There you go. What was it? Remember? Buck, a doe? A doe, I believe. Doe. And you dressed it out there? Yeah. Peeled down and went through in the truck? Threw a nice big cup and went to Rogers. Who shot it? I did. From the road? From, from the pickup? Yeah. How far away was it, you think? Oh, 70 yards, 50 to 70 yards. One shot, two shots? One shot. Where'd you hit it at? Right between the eyes. Okay. Um, is it noon yet, you think? Or afternoon? It should be probably just before noon. Just before noon, still. Any idea what time he got back to Rogers? And it probably just took us about 15 minutes to get it out and throw it in and then just drive in time back to Rogers. And what did you do then? Well, uh, yeah, I don't know where you put that. We either took it in the trailer to skin it out and cut it up or we took it, I don't know if he had a shed. But you cut it that day? We took it in, we skinned it up, and uh, told Roger I was going to go back home. Is it cut up, or you just no, skinned it up? Just skinned down. And you got it hanging? Yeah. Who got it? Well, both of us. Did okay, Roger have a knife? Yeah. What kind of knife did Roger have? Yeah. Walking knife. Kind of dull one. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And then you went home? Yeah. Yeah, it's Christmas Eve. Did you have to work that night? No, I went on over to, I believe, Sweet Home. No. I don't know if I come down to Sweet Home or... I think that year we had the Christmas down in Sweet Home. At your parents' house? Yeah. You weren't married at the time then? No. Okay. And you were living at the junction itself? Right. Was you living... I'd talk to you... A long time ago, you were living in a trailer house. Were you living in a different place than the I know yeah, at that uh, time? Let's see. That was 78, so I was living in a camper. A camp trailer? No, camp. The one you put in the pickup. Okay. That was uh, Glenn's uh, camper. Stepdad's. Oh, your stepdad. Okay. Living in a camper by yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what about your, and you, you mentioned a guy by the name of Hannah. He worked there with you at the time? Yeah, he was up there. You know, on the okay. Uh, did, uh, did you know where Hannah was living at at the time? No. He didn't live at the junction. No, he lived up somewhere toward his sister. I don't know if he lived in Camp Sherman or his sister. Was you ever? Pretty well. Hmm? Did you know him pretty well? Not really. See, uh, see, when I first started up there, I was tire man, chain man, lube man. And if I got all those done, I got to go drive a truck. Or if I uh, had a heavy emergency snow, you know, lots of snow, then Jack would put me in a truck anyway. So what? Yeah. yeah. Well, I usually got the old 65 sander. Okay. And no plow. I just followed behind him and helped sand up the road. And what Hannah was on the crew, work road crew? Yeah. And his job was different than yours? Well, I think he was just a regular uh, operator. Oh. Did you guys socialize or anything? Do you remember? I think we talked a couple of times, you know, just getting ready to go out to work, and you know, we sit around and, and talk. Would he ever come in your camper? I don't think he ever had it. And have a beer or anything? I don't think so. Did you drink at the time? Uh, a little bit, yes. Okay. What about that day with you and Roger Beck of your out? Did you take any beer or anything with you? I don't think so. So you, you don't think you wasn't neither one of you was drinking that day? Not that I know of. Yeah, you know, I can't say for sure. I but I don't think so because like when I'd go out to get a deer, you know, I'm a good shot. A beer would mess you up and shoot. Now here it didn't, didn't bother you being out there around noon in broad daylight? No. Illegally. No. That is the safest time to go out and get it here. 
Boys had. Well, aren't there more people out about then? Not really. If you go out there in the woods and you go along and there's a lookout up there, you're going to see headlights out there. Then they're going to call the police. They're going to come out and see what you're doing. You go out in the daytime, and they ain't going to think nothing of it. Just another vehicle. And the thing is, another thing is, you can see more deer easier. And I shot a deer at night once, a long time ago. It's the last deer I ever shot at night. I know I hit it. I hit it good, but I could not find that sucker. And I spent about three hours out there looking around. And then I started shooting daytime. One shot, they're dead. <coughs> okay, during during this period of time that you worked up there, and I know this is, you might think it's, I'm trying to think about, you remember what kind of, you wore work clothes? Okay, this is Detective Salisbury, and the time is 5.25, and this will be side two. We were talking, John, about the clothing that you might have wore that day. You wore Do you remember what kind of clothes you would wear to work? Yeah. What were they? What would they be? Boots like these, blue jeans, and I wore, like my dad did, these uh, blue orchards from Sears. Okay. Now uh, you're talking about a boots. I see you got a pair of boots today with kind of a vibrant sole on them. Would your boots have had a vibrant sole on at that time, maybe? Uh, I think the boots that I started out with up there had that. I don't know. Uh, those tiny little soles. has got the lines across. Oh, like a ripple sole? Yeah. It's got the kind of a uh, yellowish. Uh, you mean a crepe sole? Kind of a crepe? It's kind of a yellow uh, sponge type sponge. material. Yeah. Okay. That's when you started up there. That we're talking yeah. about '78. I started in '78. You started in '78. You don't think you had a vibrant sole at that time? No. Uh, see, when I went up there, I had to go get a pair of boots because they said I had to have boots. And I wore, usually wore, uh, like the other boots I had with a smooth sole. And he said you had to have good work boots. I think I went down somewhere and uh, got these. But they quit buying those because on the cement floor, they'd just be gone. You're lucky if you got a year and a half wear out. Okay. When, when you talk to the jobber that morning. Did you get out of your vehicle? No. Did she, how, how close did you get to her when she was talking to you? Oh, she's by the side of the pickup. On your side of the pickup? Yeah. You had the window roll down? Yeah. You was talking to her? Yeah. You never got out of the pickup? No. Okay. When you went down the road further and you turned around, did you get out of the pickup? No. Not that I remember. I might have got out back here to begin to block my hubs. But that's a bumpy road going up. Okay, you're talking about uh, when you made the right hand turn to, to go on the gravel road up. Was there snow on the ground at that time? No, not that I remember. Okay, so you didn't come back to work until the day following Christmas? Or even longer? I can't remember. Do you remember the next time you went back to uh, Roger Beck's house? No. And do you remember hearing about the first time you heard about the lady that was missing? Yeah, I was up there at the junction. At work? Yeah. Shortly after that? Just shortly after I did when I got back, you know, after Christmas and that. Did you put the two together that that's probably the lady you saw? Not for a while. And then uh, you know the police officers come up and was talking to a bunch of people up there and I said, Well, I was down there and I remember seeing a girl, I went past her and I come back. And uh, we talked to a couple other people up there. You know, they talked to Hannah. Because I, I think I seen 
told, told him that uh, I passed him going in as I was coming out. I think he said pretty much the same thing. He had passed you. Whether who they talked to first. I don't know. <laughs> um, okay. So after that, you went about your business. You continued to work up there. Yeah. And you spent a lot of time out in the area, driving around, looking for deer. Or Getting to know the area, looking well. I like to cow hunt. So we go out and do a lot of cow hunting down there because there's a lot of cows. Okay. Do you, you think you're doing an August coyote hunt? Uh, or were you deer hunting? Again? No, not that day. I was out uh, shooting rabbits, squirrels. Uh, what did you have then? What kind of gun? My 22. The same one? Yeah. And you come upon these remains. Yeah. Remember what it looked like? I think the last time we talked, you said uh, you well, thought it was human for a reason. You know, I knew it wasn't a deer if it's, you know, well, I've seen deer boats. Okay. And uh, figured, you know, it almost had to be a human. Did you see anything that was typically in a skull? Uh, I can't remember if I seen a skull or not. I don't think so. Uh, I think last time you said it might look like a skeleton, a human skeleton. Yeah, with the, you know, the, the way the bones, you know, with the ribs and that. Okay. And it was kind of put together so that you could recognize that? Or you kind of spread around a little bit of it. Okay. And you went to the store and called uh, someone. Yeah. And somebody came in contact. A woman contacted the, the sheriff down there then. You wouldn't know the other there. That uh, he's the one that lives right, right here in the area. Okay, Mark was going up. Who is that? And he came and contacted you? Yeah, I just store? waited at the store and I, I showed him where it was. Did you show him or you take him up there? Or? Yeah. He went up there. And Did you go with him or? I think I drove my pickup and he followed. Okay. There were just the two of you at the time. Yeah. And then what? Did you go somewhere after you showed him? Uh, or you hang around there? No. Uh, he talked to me a little bit, and I think he said he had some. You know, he called in and we got some others coming. And, and I think he had me leave. So I would mess up the area. What'd you go do? I don't know. Did they come? They talk to you again that day? I don't know again if it was that day. You remember what time about it was that you found this thing? Was it in the afternoon, morning? Uh, uh, no, I don't remember. Well, was it dark? No, it was light. So it was during the, during the daylight, daylight hours. Yeah. Was this a work day or weekend? Uh, you remember? You still work at night? In August? Uh, no, it was work days. It was a work day? And you'd work I, nights? No. I, we were working days in, I believe. Should, no. should have been in August. Yeah, should have been working days. So it was maybe a day off? Or? I think so. Could have been a weekend, or you don't remember? I don't remember. Okay. You remember what you, and you're positive that you didn't take anything from that thing down in the store with you to show them? I can't say. I don't think I did. You remember if you talked to a, a male or a female in the store? Well, it was a woman with a pipe. Well, well that's right. Okay. <laughs> right. okay. Do, you remember, do you remember what you said to her or anything, basically? Well, I tried to get the phone. I actually did to use the phone so I could call. And uh, there's people in there, they're all yapping. And I think she asked me what I need the phone for. And I told her I found a possible skeleton out there. The story got quiet. And she, and she called the police officer. Was there more than one person in the store? Yeah. How many? I don't know. There, you know. But I was uh, kind of shaky. Okay. Did you have the same vehicle that you did on the day that you'd seen the job? Yeah. Same vehicle you have. What kind of dog do you have? I did have a chow. 
So, you're teaching how to hunt too? No, you didn't learn to hunt real good by itself. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you explain to me how, how, you, how you came about finding this thing? Because I'm not clear on it. He, well, he was out running. He jumped out the window again. He had a bad habit of doing that. And uh, he like, if he seen a deer out there, he'd jump out the window, chase it, grab by the throat, and get it down. Is this right on the road? Or what kind of road are you on? Uh, we're going up the, the gravel road. And he went running off, so I just kind of followed him in. Okay, can, can you show us on this map where do you think it was that you found, found this stuff? These remains? This is a road that comes up, Green Ridge. Where does the rock pile up here? The, the road just passed the rock pile, there's a rock pile right here. You know, just up past the curve. So it's going to go down and stuff, go around, and then you're still going up. Yeah. You got, there's a big rock pile. And, Okay, John, for a reference now, you, you've already marked the map where you, where you turned around that day. Yeah. I mean, where you said you turned around that day. Where, from where you turned around that day, that morning, do you think you found where it is? Well, that's the same going up. Around, around. Somewhere up in here. Okay. So, why don't you let Mark that with something Mark? Yeah. 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 Okay. Better write on that so we don't know what you're talking about there. I don't know what you would use. Maybe put uh, bone, whatever you whatever you want to use. Bone, whatever you want to which you found remains human. If you turn off the, the back side of that, the room goes in a little ways. Okay. Okay. Was there any, with this bone now, you, you said that you knew it wasn't deer bones. Yeah. Okay. How many humans have you seen? None. Okay. All right. I can't understand if you've seen some bones, how you're going to know if they're human or deer. Well, I've seen human skeleton. I mean, what the bones usually look like, you know, I'm human. I know you've got two bones in here, one here, and you've got... Uh, you're indicating your arms and yeah, your legs. Yeah. And these bones were laying in that where you could almost look like you could... Uh, they see a skeleton like, form? Well, I, the human bones don't look nothing like deer bones. Okay. Well, why you don't said you? earlier rib cage. Yeah. That you saw. Also. You know, deer rib cage kind of long. The, the ribs are, are long and kind of tapered. And but these bones are just kind of kind of look like they're just kind of a, a real short, kind of like a barrel. Okay. Kinda and like you saw no fabric or clothing or anything. I might have. I don't. You know, you don't but that's that's probably what really. I think probably did, and that probably would, you know, really figure it was a uh, person. Okay. And then after you took the police back there, they just kind of asked you to leave, and you did. I think so. Okay, sometime after that, apparently, they contacted you. Yeah. So, I don't know when. Okay, and then sometime after that, they asked you to take a polygraph. Yeah. And just you? Well, I don't know. Okay, did you go to do that? Yeah. Were you alone? Well, I had a police officer there. I mean, did you go alone? You didn't yeah. go with somebody else? No, not that I know. Um, and then you had a problem? Yeah. With polygraph. And do you remember that incident at all? Well, I, I remember he said, after the polygraph, he took me out there and had me sitting down. I mean, here these police officers right in your face, you know. There's great deceptions. You're lying about something. 
Okay. And I told him I wasn't. And it's, you know, it's a uh, polygraph is not 100% sure. And uh, it's, you just, you know, the other night I seen on TV where this one guy did kill a little girl, took the polygraph and passed it with flying colors. And when I was in Germany, I had a polygraph. Somebody brought some money out of the farmer's house, but I knew the people living there with him. And they come, you know, had me take a polygraph, and I wasn't even drawn off the rack for it. Oh, you're and, lying about that? Too. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, were you? I am drawn off the rack for it, as far as I know. Well, you weren't lying about that? No. Oh, okay. And, you know, uh, that, it cost, you know, I had to send home for money, and they wouldn't even let me get a uh, period military person in Germany. And, you know, I think there's like almost $2,000 in March total. And when they come in my barracks and looked around, I had maybe uh, $20 for the March. You know, but they, you know, here's American. He makes good money. You're guilty. <coughs> and so I sent home and got the money and paid, you know, paid the court. Sure. But they wouldn't even let me get a lawyer. But you made restitution for the theft? Yeah. So. Because of the polygraph. They said, you lied, you were guilty. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. you know. But sometime after the state police talked to you on this state, and they told you that some of the questions they asked you, they thought you were being deceptive on. Right. Okay. And then they made know? some additional statements about some things. Well, I might have made some additional statements, but you know, just to try to get them off my back, I don't, you know, I can't, I've been trying to remember. Okay. And honestly, I cannot remember one way or the other. Do you remember what you said? No. Not at all. I can't even remember what I read the other last week. You know, there was something about that. You know, I read there was some, some time and I did something Prior to getting off, you know, got off. Prior to getting off work, or right after work. Okay. Well, yeah. Briefly, what you said was uh, that the reason the deception showed on the polygraph is because you had found the lady before. Right. And that was in February. But you don't remember saying that? On, on, I don't remember saying it. And I can't remember if I did. You remember getting some new snow tires after Christmas? No. You ever trying them out or anything uh, around February? No. Yeah, that's what you told them, that you were out trying out some snow tires. I know. Wow. But you don't remember buying some or getting some? I don't, I don't remember, no. You don't remember that conversation at all? No. Okay. And you still don't? Even after having thought about it? No. But what you're saying is you probably said some things to explain to them why they thought you were deceptive. Is that I could. I, you know, I can't say one way or the other. It's somewhere between the time they tell you you didn't do well in the polygraph and leaving, you've forgotten that. Somewhere there. Do, okay. Do you remember leaving there? I don't even remember the day I took the polygraph. Okay, you don't remember driving I, there? You know, uh, no. Do you remember where the polygraph was at? Somewhere there in Bend, police station there. The police place. Right there by the highway shop. Was the person that administered the thing male or female? I know the two police officers are male. <laughs> okay. Do you remember who they were? No. But they're the ones that talked to you? Yeah. Were, were they tough with you? Or? Well, they just uh, kept badgering me and badgering me. You were there quite a while then? Quite a while. You remember what they were badgering you with? What they said? Not. Not what they said, no. But they were saying, you know, you're, you're just, there's polygraphs that you're lying about this and this, you know, you, you flunk the polygraph, you know, you're going, you better be uh, getting ready to go to jail. You know, here I didn't do anything. And all I remember is 
I had to pay for something I didn't do it before. I said, here we go again. And I went and got a lawyer. Sometime after that you got a lawyer? Yeah. Um, did they come talk to you again then, after you had a lawyer? No. Then they quit? They, they kind of um, really laid off. And I remember they come up, I was living in a cabin then, and uh, they come up and sing, they would sing too. And they wanted to talk to me and they said, there's nothing about this other case or do with you. There's something about the, this other guy. This woman said that uh, he beat you up and raped her. And so they were asking what time did he leave? And I told him the girl came to up there and picked him up. She was pretty well drunk then. And uh, uh, he was a friend of mine who worked up there. He works in Sweet Home now. Okay. But uh, like I said, she was pretty well drunk then. And she was just staggered. She looked like a prostitute. She came to your place? Yeah. And they, came, they basically came up and talked to you to see if anything happened while you was in yeah. his presence. That's kind of like a witness. Yeah, and you know, like I told him, I said, he got through the shower, got in the car, and left. And then later that night, or that night, just before time to come to work, he, he, come, he got right up and come in the house. Did he didn't tell you anything about her? He said she was crazy. Did he say anything about her? He said, uh, they went somewhere. And there was like, uh, an argument or excuse me, an argument or something. Like she was just going, trying to get a whole bunch of guys. And he just left. I think this was. So he didn't hurt her. He didn't say he did. He didn't tell you. <laughs> no. And that's the last police contact for the next one. That's when they come up and talk to me about, you know. But they didn't talk to you about. Uh, I think no. The job. No, I don't think so. Okay. All right. I want to clear something up while we got it on tape and and. You had said something about that uh, you had gotten an attorney during that, that period of time. And we've asked you before, when we've talked to you, and we've talked to you two or three times, and uh, you never indicated that you wanted an attorney while we've talked to you. No. So the statements that you talked to us about, they're voluntary in your part, and you don't want an attorney, and we haven't made any threats or anything to you. No. Like I said, you're, you're a lot nicer than these guys was. <laughs> I, I had a question on the, uh, the deal. Did you help in the search for this lady? No. I, I thought they used a I, bunch of volunteers, and I was just curious. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know if they had search going or not. You know, they were kind of looking around, but you know, they had to work in, in a day. Yeah. But uh, did you ever see a poster? With her picture on it that she yeah, had. There, there were posts around sisters. Did you take one home, read it, or anything? No, there's some dropped off there to the junction. Did you have one? And they had or one up on the wall. So you had you read it? Yeah. Okay, last time we talked, we talked about uh, Pam Beck. Yeah. I guess she's formerly Pam Harris. Right. You know her for well, a long time. She used to be a girlfriend of mine. School. And you knew her before Roger Beck probably knew her and married her? Uh, no. No? See, David and Roger was friends in grade school. That's David Harris? Yeah. Okay, her brother. Right. Okay. And then uh, every once in a while he'd be around and I'd be going over to see David or Pam. Okay. Well, the two of you were 
Been boyfriend, girlfriend at the time? Uh, me and Pam, not me and Roger. Yeah, you and, <laughs> you and Pam. And even when you went in the service? Uh, yeah, she was, uh, in fact, she was my first year John letter. Okay. <laughs> and then you came back and got out of the service. She was married to Roger. Yeah. Yeah, she got she got married while I was. Yeah, I went into service when I was in my I don't know if it was basic training or AIT. I got a dear John letter. I went to training. What's in the first two years of service or a year? Got it. Okay, and uh, do you have any conversation with her? about the jogger lady? Not that I know of. Or the lady that was missing? No. Not, that I, ever not that I know of. Talking to her at all? No. She has told us that you talked to her a couple of days after the gal was missing and told her that she had to lie for you. I you never told you. nobody to lie for me. OK, and you're certain about that? Yes. That you've never had that conversation with me? No. Any idea why she'd be telling us that? But like I said before, she uh, she can tell you that white is black, and she believes she's telling you the truth. She's a, a druggy, heavy drugs, heavy in the alcohol. Ever since uh, when we were kids, she was out riding around drinking and partying, and they had a car wreck, and she got a a sign right back to the head. She got hurt pretty bad. Okay. And ever since then, that's uh, she's just been, been off the wall. Think she has a brain damage or something? Causing that? Probably not to lose. Okay. You know, because uh, you know, you can even you can even ask David. David's her sister, mm -hmm. and he'll say, "Don't believe nothing that Pam says because it, it cannot be the truth." Absolutely. You never had a conversation like that with her. I have never asked anybody life on me. <coughs> and Roger Beck, uh, he's kind of a busy guy too, isn't he? Oh yeah, he's, he's the one we've been to day one. Okay, now we've told you also in the past that we have talked to people who said that he told them that you and he killed a lady that was jogging. Yeah, that's what you say, but like I told you, you know, I did not kill nobody. I've never killed nobody. And Roger, as far as I know, when he was with me, he has not killed nobody. We were in the close area. By the time we got there, she'd be been somewhere else. By the time you got back from Sisters. But by well, the time we got you know, got through out of uh, Cynthia's house. And, and got back out there. You're absolutely certain about that's how that morning went? That is how that morning went. You left work sometime. We're going out to see if you could find some deer. Right. Seen you on a gas, went over to sisters, had breakfast. And, and state police took my uh, Exxon ticket. Yeah. You know, I, I told them, I says, here's how much gas I got. Okay, you had, how long you you had planned this uh, thing with Roger? I believe so. Okay. Because he was he was saying, you know, if I remember why we were doing it, it's because he was out of food. He wasn't working. Didn't have no employment coming in, and they needed food. Okay, so you you had planned on going out that morning and go poke. Okay, you're you're, you're fairly organized, aren't you? Because I've seen you, and I know you're organized. So so. Fair so. But. You think you would, uh, first thing you have to know, you got enough gas. Well, I'll tell you, there are no gas stations at the junction. And there's a lot of times people from the road would come in and just siphon your gas right out. And there's the times I had two full tanks go up there, and the next time I go, you know, pick up both tanks are empty. And, you know, then we started keeping extra gas. If I got my cans hit, I'd ready to start keeping a couple barrels of it. 
I even put a electric fence charger on my pickup once trying to catch. So when you when you left there that morning, you know that you've got 38 miles to go, don't you? Mm -hmm. Don't you look at your gas gauge when you left the junction? I knew I had gas. I just jumped in and headed. Did your gas gauge work on the pickup? I believe so. And when you switch tanks, then the you only had one gas the gauge. Yeah, one gas gauge. You got to switch. So 78 had the switch over by the heater. Okay, but because of all the thefts and everything, you know, check your gas gauge. Well, you know, because working all night, and then in there to, in my statement, there was, I'd help somebody. I don't know if it was right after I got off work or just before I got off work. And uh, then I went into the house, got ready to went. Um, was that, do you help him with the state truck for years? I don't know, you got, you got it in the statement. Oh, do you yeah, I, I didn't even remember that. Like I said last time, you let me read some stuff. And I think it was, he was the jump start. You said you got a jump start and you got paid, they paid you for it. Okay. Do you remember that? I don't, I don't remember that, I, you know. I read some of I couldn't even remember. I can't remember if it was during working hours or if I used my own truck. And I read that last week. Well, you remember these other things pretty well. Or you seem to, well, you know, your other activities. So, some, like I said, you know, here's these two. Right, right, kind of reminded me of gorillas. In fact, one of them. A scar. You're talking about a state policeman? Yeah. Really? Okay, this is Detective Salisbury. It's uh, 555, and we're continuing with what we'll call the side C of this tape. Like I said, one of them got a scar. Down past the left. <laughs> but, you know, they were very persistent. And, you know, just over and over and over. And that's, a, that's the only way I can ever remember anything, is go over and over and over something. It's like my CDL. I've been studying it for a year and a half since it first got out of the book. I told you. Remember how long you were there when you went to the party? It was quite late. When you left? Yeah. Or when you got to go after work? Uh, I think it was after work. I, I, I can't say, but it was quite late when I got out of there. Did you talk to uh, David Harris about the incident and tell him what they, you know, you were fairly good friends with David Harris, yeah. right? Did you talk to David Harris about the incident and tell him what was going on? I probably did. Anybody else that you might have talked to and told them what was going on? Well, I had friends up there at the junction. Who were them then? I don't know. I saw a couple of guys over there. Like Levi. Uh, I really can't remember who all of there. I don't remember telling somebody else yeah. that you told them the story about finding them in February. Not that I remember. Doesn't come to you at all. No. Okay. Hey, did uh, Roger take a polygraph? I don't know. Regarding this? I don't know. You didn't talk to him about it? Or, or Pam? No. You don't know if they did? I don't, I don't know if they did or not. Was there a lot of traffic on that road that day when you drove in? Did you see I didn't any mean, cars? I don't remember seeing any cars that I drove in. Okay. 
was in, like I said, I, when I was coming out past her, and I see the black pickup, one or two Volkswagen vehicles, and another car, and maybe another one. There were four or five vehicles going in as I was coming out. But that was way out near the highway. Yeah. But you didn't see anything on this other thing at all. But see, you can, let's see, there's another way you can get that road coming down right there. Yeah. That comes back down, it comes in right by the Y. Right. Somebody could have been coming down there. You know, I, yeah. I didn't see anything. So I can't say there was something there. I, Did you see anybody else jogging or walking along that road that day? No. Okay, we've talked a little bit about, remember the Gables one girl? If you didn't know her name, tell you where the sister's rodeo. And be able to go right home to oh, Sweet yeah. Home. This is sometime before. I don't know when that was. It's a few years before you were working at the junction. Were you working for the state then? I was working, I started at the state in 78. Okay. So we, that would have been before I started working. Okay. Um, you were over there for the Indian rodeo? For the rodeo. And you were with Harris? David yeah, Harris? With Harris. Okay. Um, but you gave this guy a ride home to Sweden. Well, David talked me in, and he was going to come with us. Yeah. And, you know, uh, she had a bunch of quarts of beer, quarts of beer. And she gave me one of those. She gave David, uh, David, David had a bunch of beer already. We started coming this way, and he wanted to go back. Remember why? Why he wanted to go back? No. Was it his idea to go back? It was his idea. Was his family ever there? Or were the two of you together? I don't, I, well, I can't remember if he had a girlfriend there with him. Maybe he always had a girlfriend. Did he go over there with him? Or did you meet him? Different vehicles. Okay, I'll be met there. But you planned to go over together. Okay. okay, so he has his own vehicle. Yeah. And, but he talks you into driving this guy, but yeah. why don't you take her back himself? You know? I don't know. He might, let's see. He might, let's see. He's probably over there with Carly. So she's probably just dead. Yeah. But David knew this girl. So that's why he talked me into taking her back. It was Carly. That's his wife now. This is what I mean. That's the stage right now. So he had kind of picked this gal up and or ran into her somewhere. Well, she was somewhere in the camp area or whatever. Okay. But anyway, he starts with you. Then he wants you to take you back, yeah. him back. So you do that. Yeah. And he wanted me to go ahead and take her over. She, she had the baby in her. Anyway, she had to go go home, and they talked me into taking her home. I was ready to go to sleep. So I told my go ahead and take her home. So, Something happened on the way. Huh? Yeah. What happened? Uh, well, Mike said she gave me this beer. And to this day, I still say there's something in there. Because uh, it's just like uh, I was floating on a cloud. And then she started making passes at me. And uh Are you driving? Yeah. Okay. She wanted to pull over and have some sex. And then she got all pissed off that I was so drunk I couldn't even get a heart on. And then she told the police officer that uh if I tried to rape her, she was pissed off at me and that's she said I held a knife to her. I didn't. What about this happen? Uh, there used to be an old steel bridge up past Cascadia. Oh, the entire Yeah. And 
we'll go back in back there off the road. The other car? The other truck? Yeah. The other truck. The one we just picked up. Okay. And you weren't able to perform? No. She got mad? Yeah. And uh, the police took the, I think they took the bottle of beer and had to see if there was anything uh, extra in there. I'm not positive. But uh, I remember one, one say, he told me, he said, if you're, if you're sure you, you didn't uh, force yourself on it, he said, if her husband and her friends are probably going to come and beat you up. And they did. So that right in front of the woodchippers, and I walked over to the Lemon Fish Department and signed a complaint. But that was her husband? I don't know. I don't know. Somebody can beat you up. Yeah, there was three or four of them. And I remember David, he was kind of pissed at me because I just stood there while they were beating on me. Well, David had. Yeah. He wanted to get in there. He's a little hockey center. He said, if I would have swung once, he jumped in and helped me out. How long ago, how long after the incident was that? A week, maybe two weeks. It was just a short time after. And you reported it to Lebanon Police? Lebanon Police, okay. Did Our, they arrest somebody? Or? Well, yeah. they arrested him on assault. Okay. Whoever he was, yeah. you don't know. There was, like I said, there was three or four of them beating on me. They, they arrested this one. They didn't find the other, like, I guess, but they got this one. And David was, was, was with him. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, the girl was with David. I can't. I don't remember if it's Carney or his other wife or his girlfriend. Was Bill with him? Dubray? I don't remember. You don't know. He might have been there because they were always there for the Uh She accused you of having a knife. Right. When you, you, you raped her. I saw that too. Did you have a knife? There was a knife in the hand, uh, like uh, one big one. What would it look like? Uh, a little old German knife. Uh, folding knife? Or a straight knife. Hunting knife? Okay. Well, it's kind of like, you know, a military German knife. Is it handled? Well, not, a, not a bayonet, but, you know. The handle, remember, color of the ears? What used to be my dad's drive back to the service. Had a black, black handle with the swastika and another color. Did you, did you threaten her with an eye? No. Did you cut her clothes off? <coughs> no. Cut her clothes? No. Did she? She took her clothes off. Did she carry any of in the mud? Not there while I was there. Okay. That's too you remember. No. Okay, you took a photograph on that, too, didn't you? I don't think so. Oh, did you say? I think you did. I don't know. I did. I think you passed it. Yeah. I can't, I don't remember if I did. It's <laughs> kind of out of your history. You passed it. Shit. I'm going to remember that one. <laughs> And then we'll get you a copy of that one. Could you? I'd appreciate it, but I'm afraid that's <laughs> over. Yeah. I have a question back on this other deal here. Uh, did you continue to hunt in the area after that day? The, 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 the day you saw the charter? Did you continue your normal hunting and stuff after that? Well, like I, like I said, usually, you know, I just went down through here on this road. You let it back over here. Mm -hmm. uh, well, no. Back, back over here. Yeah. That's where all the lot of coyotes were. Okay. But you were rabbit hunting in there in August. Well, I was just curious. Just, just kind of rabbit up to get in there, you know, just in case. Because oh. did you go into Camp Sherman during the winter, you know, after that? Oh. Probably. To the store or any of that. Because then I started getting on the other side, going by Jack Lake Road, up there on the hills, and yeah. started, learning, started learning the roads, where, you know, where they, which one was dead end, where this one would go, and that. Yeah. 
Uh, had you been out with Roger before? Pardon? Had you been out with Roger before getting me? For him? Not that I remember. Or since? After that? Not, not, not that I remember after that, no. I think, I think what, the, what he did is he, he moved off. Went somewhere. Is that where he went? No. You sure there was only one gun? One gun. That morning. Right. And it was yours, 22. Yeah. Both action with the scope. You still have that one gun? I think I I trade guns. Uh, I think I traded that to David. He needed a gun. Time. He needed a gun. I got me a 22 Magnum. He was a little bit better than 22 long rifle. Yeah. Found out real quick the shell was very expensive. <laughs> Did you ever trade a gun to Roger? I might have. It might have been enough for his brother in law or something. Do you have any conversation? Well, about? let's see. I might, I might have treated him again because he needed one. Like I said, I'll, I'll, you know, I get a lot of guns and I'll swap. But we have traded for it. Not another gun. Well, I've traded guns for guns. Well, I mean, he didn't have them. No. Uh, didn't have anything. Chainsaw? Do you remember that at all? I might have traded for a chainsaw. I know. I might have. That's, that might be where I got that uh, home line. But 350 home line. You know what you gave, you gave him for that? Might have been a gun. Yeah, what kind? Could have been a 22. You don't remember that? No, no, it's not, it's not, no, no, it's, you know. You don't even remember the, the chainsaw until I well, brought it up? Not really. Um, I know I got a chainsaw from somewhere. And I rebuilt that when I was cutting wood for my sister and other people. So that could have happened? That could, yes, that could have happened. And you could have told somebody about that I could have in the past. Could have forgot. Okay. My memory ain't worth diddly. Oh, I don't think it's that bad. Oh, it's just... You know, I, I get... Uh, Linda asked, you know, my ex-wife, she asked me, it was one guy's name up there at the junction. And I could not remember it. And he's been up there with me many years. I couldn't even remember his first name. So you're back with Linda. Yeah. So so. Is she, she she's back in the area. Yeah, she's living in Ma's, I'm living in my Ma's. We go out. Are you thinking about reconciling? Yeah. Okay. You know, she she promised to uh, watch her drinking if I would promise to go to the doctor about my sex problem and try to get my sex desire perked up. To a normal human being level. Is it not normal? I can I can have me a, some sex in January and maybe in April be starting to want again. Maybe I go six months. I remember she uh, we had an argument. She said you're cut off for a week or, or two weeks. I told her you're cut off for a month. Okay. okay. You can do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when uh, Roshanda was missing that day, right. when uh, Linda came home, did you have sex that day? Yes. Was that because of your six-month cycle was up, or did something get you excited that day? Well, it's just, uh, she wants, you know, she wants it all the time. She wears a guy to the moment. But, uh, you know, we, we thought Shannon was just out playing somewhere. Okay. And in fact, we were in the bedroom and we heard a noise while we were doing it. And I'm very paranoid. You know, I won't even take my t-shirt off in front of kids. You know, I don't even own, own a bathing suit. I won't show my legs, I won't show my bare chest. 
and you know, I so much like my dad, I firmly believe sex or even just hugging and kissing should be behind the bedroom door, not in front of the kids. And I was upset about that, but you know, like I told you, that is the way I was brought up. And it's when? Have you ever been to a doctor? Not yet. About that at all? I've been getting chased all over the place, going from one, <coughs> work on one piece, and then uh, I changed the insurance companies. I got, uh, oh, a new insurance company out here at uh, for Valley Clinic. It's something to care. Oh, that'll cover. I hope so. <laughs> so you're planning to do that. But even when you and Linda were living together, you apparently had this problem. You yes. never did go see a doctor. No. Because, see, uh, I was kind of upset about her drinking. And she was upset about my lack of sexual desire. I mean, you know, I'd go to sleep and, and a couple times I'd be sound asleep and she'd move my shorts and get on and start the sexual act while I'm asleep. You next to that. <laughs> that is how horny that is. You know, it's it's probably not the sheets all messed up. It's just sex really doesn't have nothing spectacular for me. You know, like you know, I can well Oh, let's see. She was right about it just the other last night. So she hadn't had any for a week and a half. She said, let's go out. And we went out, let her do it again. But, uh, you know, I told her, she's going to have to work to get me ready. What, what, you turn, what does turn you on? Not much. Because you just have a lot of dirty books up there at the junction. Oh, uh, who's for those? The, I get, I got a subscription to Playboy. Oh, yeah. And uh, in fact, I even got the Playboy channel. I like what they have some good movies on there. I don't like to watch the the dirty movies. I'm, you know, I don't even like to watch people on TV kissing and hugging and going at it. But they do have some good movies on the Playboy channel. And there's some good stories in the Playboy books. In fact, you know, they've got uh, good, good brochures on what movies are good and rating and good stereo stuff and cameras. So you, so, that doesn't turn you? No. But that's not the reason we have it? No. Not the reason we have the Playboy channel? No. But it's taken. You, you've taken a Playboy magazine and, and, and masturbated by the use of Playboy magazine before. More than likely, yes. Especially before I was married to my daughter when we were separated. Basically up at the junction on lonely nights. Yeah, when Linda wasn't around. Okay. You know, like, there's, there's been times that we've been separated. There's a rumor, and I don't know, I haven't verified it, but you know, there is, there's a, some allegations that I heard one time that uh, Mr. Willis was a boss up there at the time. Jack Wills. Jack Will, Wills. Yeah. Uh, that he caught you masturbating in the lunchroom. Bullshit. Oh, I mean, that's, uh, did, did that happen? No. Okay. I can see where I did it. <laughs> okay. You answered it then. <laughs> I want to go back to this map thing up here one time. Now, the day that you see her jogging and the day that uh, you go back and you turn around and then come back up, how many times have you been in there before that? Uh, I can't say. Quite a few? Probably a few. More than, more than once? For sure. Yeah. Because, you know, I know the throat is steep and bouncy. And then, you know, it's steep enough that if you're low on gas, going up that hill, you're going to put your pickup, the gas pickup, to out of the gas eventually if you're low. Did you ever run out of gas out in there? Yeah. 
but you know, I always used to have two tanks. And I, before I'd, I'd been to Sisters, parked my truck up there, and then I figured I had gas. I got where you learn very fast. You don't depend on having gas. Okay, so you, you've seen her, you know it was December 24th, 19, when, when you seen her jogging? I guess it's 78, that's... Okay, December 24th, 1978. Remember, and then you found her when, you remember? No, I don't. You've been saying date like, I don't even remember the, the date you been saying. Okay, when you found her, or found the remains and took them to the store that day, or went to, <laughs> went to the store that day, was it in the wintertime then? No, I think you were saying April sometime. Okay, April. And you drove that area after that? I've been back in there after that, yes. In fact, we started hunting, deer hunting during regular season, quite heavy in there. We got, got to know the roads. Okay, the day that you're with Roger Beck and you go back out to poach that morning after you pick him up and you grew us a, a, your route that day, see any people on your route? Not that I remember. Any cars? Not that I remember, that'd be people. Did you talk to anyone in your room? No, not that I can remember. Okay, there was some talk, I think it was from Roger Beck and Pam at that time, that the three of you had gone out to a tavern. You don't remember that at all? No. You remember yourself going home? And I'm pretty sure I went home. And had Christmas Eve with your parents? Yeah. And then probably stayed there the next day? Or yeah. Do you remember? Or do you? Honestly, I can't remember back then. But the way, you know, if I wasn't down at home for Christmas, you know, down my mother's, they'd be up at the junction. They'd, they'd have Christmas up there, you know. And we'd, be together as a family for Christmas. Well, I think at that time there was a lot of covering for this poaching going on. You didn't want to tell a state policeman that you were not poaching. No. And I don't think Roger did either. Have you talked to him since? Uh, you, you eventually told him that you had shot a deer then. Right. And I guess Roger did too. The two of you talked together since about what you did tell him? Or I don't think so. You know, the experiences you had with I, these I don't, guys? I don't, like I said, uh, I think the only other time I've seen Roger, and I, I can't say for sure, is my mind and my And I went to their house, I think it's in Jefferson. They were, they were living somewhere around Jefferson there. And, and then uh, I think I see him. I'm holding my power saw. That's where I got it. His power saw I got fixed. He had to go cut some wood. And I tried to just, me and David went out to, might have been the same day that we were at his house, and he was out with his mother's or sister's or whatever. But we went. There's two places. I don't know if I see him at his house and our fan told us that he was over in other place. But we see him and he said the police had gotten the power saw. Or not the police, but he did something with the power saw and took it down to have it fixed and he couldn't get it back for some reason. Okay. But since then I haven't I don't Never seen him Roger at all. But you didn't talk to him specifically about what you told the police, what he told the police, but eventually you told him. No. Never got together at all. No. Pam either? No. And have you talked to Pam since? She called me on the phone. Uh, right before the end of the year, or right? That's first of this year. saying that the detectives are down there talking to her and said Roger's saying this, Roger's saying that. And uh, 
that there is going to be a, a grand jury and everybody's going to be called in to mail Roger and he said a bunch of stuff. I think that it has been before because it's supposed to happen in January. What'd you tell her? Well, I told her, I said, hey, they can come and talk to me. I said, I ain't got nothing to hide. I'll tell them what I remember. I said, they got my statements. They can read the statements. And uh, I said, let's go for the grand jury. So, uh, yeah, the only thing that I have a problem with, and I really do have a problem with, with you telling those folks when you took that polygraph that you found this lady, and you gave a pretty good description while you read it. You can read it again if you want. And I can't imagine that you'd forget that. Even telling them or having seen her, I don't imagine. It's really tough for me to imagine that you forgot something like that, John. Because you remember everything else I'm, pretty I'm damn well. A, I'm a very simple person. Well, I don't think you are. No. Well, I am. I don't like uh, uh, hurt people with words, or I don't... I have had people, even when I was in school, I would not fight because I didn't like to hurt people. And people would beat on me, I'd turn around and walk away. And even when in the service, you know, I was a mechanic. I didn't have to get out there and go fight or hurt anybody. And uh, there's been times that I have hurt people, you know, like my, my sister. I just joked around, just dropped my hand on her leg and raised a well. You know, I felt, felt like a goddamn dog that hit on a rock. But, uh, you know, if I didn't see her out there in a body form, like I said, it could, I could have built a block to try to forget about that. And I, you asked me if I would try to remember. I, I have tried. Are you dead? quick on your feet at thinking that you would come up with a story like that when confronted with these deceptions? I'm not very, very quick at all. Well, this would be quite a story to come up with. Well, I'll tell you, you have somebody, two, two guys, just hounding you and hounding you, hounding you, that you going to say something. You know, here they're, they're saying, you went out and killed her. Where is she? I said, I did not kill nobody. And they just keep hounding and hounding. And then you come up with Tom? I could, you know, I ain't saying I come up with the story to get Why aren't you saying that? That's what I don't I, understand. I ain't gonna... Because you remember them telling you, hounding you. Okay, this will be side D of the tape. The time is 6.25. But I'm going to say something. They... I might have, you know, I could have seen a body out there and just try to block it out. I ain't going to say I did. I ain't going to say I didn't. Because I cannot fully remember one way or the other. It is very possible that I did find a body out there and was so scared to death that the police would be coming right back at me saying, you killed her, you went right back, you found her, you're going to jail. Okay, so you blocked it at that time, and then after the polygraph, it came back up again? And you told him about it? And now you've blocked it again? No, I ain't saying that. I'm saying that, you know, here, you try to go and forget about it, and there's things you probably tried to forget about. I suppose. And try to block out. And, you know, maybe you're, sometimes you're successful. Sometimes it just goes back in the back of your mind, and, in the surface again. But I ain't going to tell you that I found her, and I ain't going to tell you that I didn't find her, because I cannot tell you, sitting here, I cannot positively tell you one way or the other. Okay, but the only thing is, John, about that is, you know, you, it'd be different than if you, you just said you found her, but you, you didn't just say that you found her. You give a good description of In fact, you use the term, and these are your words, an exit wound in the chest, and then you use her throat to slash. Now, you know, that's some pretty graphic uh, injuries that uh, that you're going to see on a person. Well, you know, I've seen pictures. You know, you got that stuff on TV all the time. 
And there, here you got two huge guys just badging and badging you. What do they want? You know, if I didn't do something, I guess, yeah, I took her out and shot her. No, you know, because that'd be stupid. But here these two guys just won't leave you alone and just keep coming back and saying you're lying, you're lying, you know, and all this, and just keep coming back at you. You might say, you know, I might come up with something and tell them, say, yeah, I found her, and it, you know, this was done done. It'd been very easy. Did you ever threaten to kill anybody? To hurt him bad? I've never been mad enough to do that. Except uh, I did uh, did make a very strong statement right here in this building. But if I ever found out somebody's hurt Channing, I had him backing up. <laughs> I think I kind of spooked him a little bit. Thought I was going off my rocker. But the thing is, Channing means the world to me. Byron does too. And I believe that one day, I hope one of these days, Jenny can walk him back. I'll bring her over here and bring her right in front of him. You think that's going to happen? I hope so. You want to believe that? I want to believe it. it. I want to believe it, and until you can prove to me that she is deceased, I'm going to believe that. There's a lot of kids that turn up missing, and they're missing for 10, 15 years, and all of a sudden they come walking home. There's a lot of kids and grown people that disappear and are never found. Some of them are found as a skeleton, you know. But I truly hope the Channing comes walking home. But somebody grabbed her. Well, my ex-mother-in-law is very religious, and it's kind of, it's, it's not a, a funny thing to say, but uh, when I was using, when I divorced Linda, trying to get her attention to her drinking problem, Ruth knew exactly what I was doing before I did it. You know, and she told Linda, he, 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 you know, he's going to divorce you to get your attention, and he's going to, she brought, the man brought that up and says, hey, I know what you're doing. So what's that got to do with Channing? Ruth seen this Channing get, you know, walking through the woods with this guy, get a semi. Oh, in a dream? Yeah, in a vision. And she come up with a name on the truck. What? She figured out where the truck was out of. What's the name of the truck? I don't know the name. Uh, she, I think she talked to you about it. Well, I remember having a vision, but I don't remember her ever giving me a name of the, the truck that it was ever in. I know uh, Carolyn, you know, Carolyn, that's my sister. John, we know she's not with Carolyn, okay? Well, we, we no, ran, I know that. I mean, no, we ran no, that down. No, we no, ran the truck no, down. No, I know that she's not with Carolyn, because Carolyn's right there in Albany, or yeah, somewhere in Albany. But Carolyn went down, she found out there was the trucking line with this name on the door, the same color truck, and uh, a la last name of this guy used to work for the company. Now, how, how is Ruth going to know this? Where, where's Carolyn at in Albany? I don't know. She, she used to live out... Somewhere else between some three pink elephant out there. Yes. In box. Yeah. And then she moved... <coughs> when uh, Gary died, she had to move to a cheaper place. So the other was in the truck or something? Yeah. So she's still living in Albany. She's still living here in Albany. Yeah. What's her last name? I don't know where she's going by now. Do you ever see her? No, I've seen her last night. If you ever see her, I want you to have her give us a call. Okay. Okay. 
that I'd like to talk to her in person because I think we talked we talk to her, we talked to her by phone or through another placement or something, but I'd like to talk to her in person. Okay. Well, is there anything you can tell us that's going to help us in this investigation and Rashonda's? Anything that you haven't told us? No, not that I can. But we haven't asked you over and over again? <laughs> You've asked me over and over and over and over again. There's no way that you think you'll remember ever I'll keep, finding that body I will keep or trying, trying to remember back then. Or telling somebody that you did. Okay. Either thing. Yeah. Whether it was to cover for your answers and you thought of it on the spur of the moment, to, or you actually did see a body like that. Yeah. In the same location, I guess. I guess. That's a kind of you didn't do anything to that young lady. I had nothing to do with the disappearance of her or her death. Roger Beck. Roger Beck, on that day that he was with me, had nothing to do with her disappearance or her death. He was in the same pickup I was. We had my 22, and we were off at a later time. And a jogger ain't going to stand in one spot to jog all day and wait for somebody to come. Roger ever tell you about hurting anybody? Well, I remember Roger liked to fight. Mm -hmm. I hurt him bad, shooting him, stabbing him. No, I I heard a lot of talk about that's how he is now. He's uh he's been in prison for rape. But he never told you that he did something bad to somebody. He has never not blew him away or anything like that. I remember. Any conversation you ever had with him? Or raping somebody? Or? No, I don't think I've seen him in four, five, six years. Yeah, I'm talking about when you knew him. Talk to him. I know that every once in a while. Back then, he might have said, you know, he's so pissed off at this one person, he might blow him away, you know. But Roger was a lot of talk. That's, you know, he said something that you think of, just blowing off steam. So these two state policemen came down on you and accused you of killing this girl. Right. You were dumbfounded. Yes. No reason for that. I thought, here we go again. In the right place at the wrong time, and you don't pay the consequences. Did you think of that when you found the bones? What you thought was a lady? Yeah. Why didn't you take, why didn't you just turn around and leave that day? Well, even now, uh, you know, if, if somebody was playing Channy, if she's dead, I'm going to know about it. And, you know, you, you, you don't go out there and find somebody and not tell, you know, hey, dude, here's this, bu this body. You, know, you mentioned a reward when you found the body. They had been a reward posted, and you apparently mentioned that to the state police. Is that why you called them? Or? No. Did you know about it? Do you remember that? I remember this one guy saying uh, he wanted to talk to me. He said, there's a reward. I just want to hear your story. I've read it in the police reports. Uh, can we meet? I think it was down the sisters. And like I told him, I said, I didn't come here to look for a reward. I said, I'll tell you my story. Did you get the reward? No. I wouldn't take no reward. Did you put in for the reward? No. Did you ask anybody yourself for the reward? No. You know, remember that guy getting a hold of me and said he wanted to talk. He, meant, he mentioned about the reward. Remember who he was? No. I think it's, uh, he said something about being a friend of the husband or, or a lawyer of the husband or something. Yeah, and yeah, no, I think, if I'm thinking about that guy, uh, you told him that you probably touched her hair when you found her 
in February. He mentioned something about there could be air in your pickup, but why would it be there? Do you remember that? I don't know. But you remember talking to this guy? I remember talking. I don't remember when it was. Okay. Well, we didn't have to report this post because that wasn't until later on. Yeah. Do you remember that? No, I remember talking to the guy. But, uh, had somebody with me. He told more than one person about the plan here in February, and that's, I suppose, uh, that's why we have trouble with it. I don't know. I, I could have. Okay. You know, it's very, been very easy for me to do it. You know, and then say, hey, you know, I can go turn this in. This is this from, you know, this might be that girl. But from what you're telling us, who you are, who John is, wouldn't do that. Wouldn't leave a lady laying out there dead and not tell somebody about it. Not really. It's, uh, you're, you're telling us you're a different person than that. Well, say that that was, you know, I found her. Here I was one of the last people to see her. The police have been hounding me like Gestapo. Well, none of that one did. Oh, they've been talking to me. In February? I think so. Okay. And uh, who, who's going to be a likely suspect? You're one of the last people to see her and one of the unfortunate people to, uh, to find her. But you didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. And that's why you tell us you turned her in and later because you hadn't done anything and you got feeling bad for the family. Well, that's not the kind of guy that would walk away and leave somebody laying there. But that's not the guy that would be scared of shitless of uh, having to pay, you know, for going to jail for something he didn't do. Why would you go to jail? He didn't do it. I know. But here, now you've even said that Shannon's dead, and you bet me ten thousand dollars if he had it. And I, I think my thing was a million. Ten million. I, okay. I think that was the term I used. Yeah. And you know, I will only took the polygraph, and he goes, Ee! and well, here we go again. But I had nothing to do with her, and I had nothing to do with Chandy disappearing. And we're right back in the same old boat. Here we are. No. How do we get out of the boat? You're on our side of the fence now sitting here. What do you think you would think? What's the odds of you being the last person to see that jogger on that road? You finding her, what's the odds of that? Pretty bad. But you got to remember, as I was coming out, there were other people going in, so I could be, might not be the last person to see her. There are here these other vehicles going in. Where did they go? Did they see her? Yeah. And then, okay, we'll give you that point, but then, the day Rochelle leaves, you go to work, you come home, she's still there, you know. What have been the odds of her staying there if you'd stay to work? Looking at it from our side of the fence, yeah. sitting in my chair, thinking about that. Every day she stays there. This particular day, you go to work, you come home, and then she disappears. Well, you got a good question. Go why would I do anything to hurt the chat? I don't know why. What would be a motive? I'm not no well, sex. Of, I'm not no well, sex crazy. That would maniac. be a part of it, yeah. And you can, you know, you can verify that for Glenda. Well, we can verify you're not. You have said you're not normal sex driven. Well, what does that mean? When well, Linda told us that when she went to take a shower after coming home from work that night, you were bothering the shower, and eventually you went to the bedroom. Well, she said she wanted. And you don't. Uh, well, no, she. I think she gave me the idea that you, you were coming after her, and that's unusual. Well, well I'll tell you, did anything to Shani, 
I sure would be able to do it for Linda. Maybe that turned you on. Shit. Yeah. Little kid. Little kid. Some, little, some there, people, there is people out there that is so sick in the head they're pathetic and they need to be put away or hung or shot. Okay. Okay. Well, some people get turned on by little kids. Maybe you're one of them. I, I, I don't know that, John. I am not. What do they got? There ain't nothing there. I'm nothing like Steve. I didn't even know her bra size. Steve sure the hell did. We're up there at the god dang hill looking on a search, and here's Steve trying to figure out how to get in this other yeah. girl's pants. The only problem is, Steve, if we can account for Steve all over that day, there is no problem with Steve whatsoever. I know where he was at in those hours that Shanty disappeared. But you, we can't account for you. And here it is again, we can't account for you. I was very helpful. Took a police officer right on the route that I went. They even explained things that was coming up that we could not see. Took him through a log, showed him where. Very pleasant and happily asked this force ranger if he wanted me turn around, he was trying to find a lake, and I said, I can take you to it, he said, well, i got to get back, I said, I'll find another day. If I did something to Channing, I wouldn't be happy and be you know, very willing to help somebody. Well, I don't think we're going to solve a lot today. No. We have some stuff we've sent out to uh, a place to get some blood work done. And we don't have the answer back on it, but when we get it back, we'll want to talk to you again. Okay. Is that a problem? No. Okay. Yes, I don't know if Linda ever talked to you about it or not, but you know, we never did know who was handed this blood time. But we've done some things too, and we're testing that. So when we get those back, and they should be back shortly, we'll, we'll probably give you a call to work if that's all right. And, and you know, if it's more convenient for you to drop in, you know, uh, it probably is yeah. because it's a little bit easier. Okay. Well, we're not bothering your job, yeah. and my last communication talk to you. So yeah. why don't we kind of let her go for tonight? And, uh, my gosh, it's almost seven o'clock. Yeah. So uh, why don't we do that and get back to you maybe a week or two or something like that? Okay. Okay. okay the time is. 6.45, Mr. Texas Alvarez.